Hi, join me, Suresh Jet Marbury, on IETV every Tuesday night, 8 to 9, on IE Sports Digest, a comprehensive roundup of all sports, local, regional, and international. We will reach out to our villages and our communities in all areas of Trinidad and Tobago to highlight their sport and activities. I will also invite prominent guests to share their views and address current issues facing sports, focusing on realistic solutions. Join me on IETV. IE Sports Digest, Thursdays at 8 p.m. right here on IE TV. Hi, pleasant good evening and welcome once more to IE TV Sports Digest. As we move forward in our third week of programming, let me begin again by giving thanks to our sponsor, Lazary and Samson Travel Service Limited. We are very appreciative, as I said last week, you know, our first sponsor on this program, so it's wonderful that they can be with us and we look forward moving, you know, into other areas and other sponsorship. But thank you very much to our first sponsor, Lazary, as I said, you know, to the people at Lazary. When we were on the first program, we mentioned that Pawgen has been sponsoring secondary schools cricket for 25 years, and we are hoping that Lazare will be with this program for the next 25 years, whoever may be here. Thank you and welcome. As usual, we started our roundup on cricket tomorrow. I guess that's the main topic. The Indians are here for three one days and one T20. The three one days will be played at the Queen's Park Oval, one of the most scenic venues in the world, and that begins tomorrow morning at 930 and after the three one days, they journey to the, one of the other great stadiums in the Caribbean, a lovely place. Very, the ambience is fantastic there, and I'm sure it's going to be filled for the first T20 at the Brian Lara Cricket Academy. And strangely enough, we just had a discussion here. I'll introduce it to a gen gentleman just now that, you know, it's named Academy, but we haven't got the Academy part of it moving as yet, hopefully soon. But for now, we'll enjoy the cricket at the Brian Lara Cricket Academy. We know the engines are not to full strength. They are... They have Shekhar Darwin as their standing captain. Rohit Sharma is not here. Neither is Virat Kohli. Neither, I mean, we'd have loved to see Pant. He's not coming either. But still, they have a very formidable team. Their cricket has developed a lot, substantially, since the days of the Gavaska and so on. And they are the top of the world, so they still have a very competitive team. We know we are coming off some losses to Bangladesh, and we are hoping that our West Indians will make us proud, led by our very own Puran and that the skipper will settle down, give us a big knock and to get all the other players we will start to see some victory in these one days. Um, as I said for the T20 the Indian team is still missing Kohli, we wouldn't get to see him at all, we'd have loved to see him here but then we don't want him to get form with us but Sharma will be here to get out of some of the other big names of the T20. So you still have a chance to go out starting this tomorrow, Sunday, next week, Wednesday are the one days and then we follow with the T20 on Friday the 29th at the Brian Lara Cricket Academy. The Cricket West Indies Regional Under-17 series was supposed to have bowled off two years ago, but as we all know, it has been raining cats and dogs, as they say. So after two days of trying, no cricket so far, unfortunately for those youngsters. I can imagine how they must be feeling there, locked up in the, um, in the hotel there in Coover, Metro Hotel. Over the last couple of days, can't even come out to have a, a hit because it's very wet out there. Needless to say, the CWI is trying their best. They have rescheduled rather than cancelled the games, and they are hoping to kick off with two games over the weekend and then follow up next week to still get the tournament on the, on the way. Very important for our viewers to know that what West CWI is trying to do, that's Cricket West Indies, is from this tournament to get a group of guys into training in preparation for the next Under-19 World Cup. So this tournament is very, very important to our Under-19 cricketers because that's where they want to start training for the next World Cup. And they are hoping to use these games to select a squad to begin that training. So hopefully the God will smile at us. That's the God of sunshine, that is. And we will get some lovely weather for the youngsters to go out and show their skill. And we wish, of course, our Toronto and Tobago team led by um, Jagesa and coached by Riyad Emirat, all the best in the tournament. 
Also, we saw a fantastic game of cricket again. Test cricket, they say, is dying, uh, but definitely not. It has, it has a great resurgence recently. We saw India series. We saw the Englishmen coming off each recently against New Zealand. And then we saw Pakistan come from behind and chase down to defeat Sri Lanka with a fantastic unbeaten 160 from this young man, Abdullah Shafiq only 22 years of age, and for batting the fourth inning of a game on a Sri Lankan pitch that's turning and probably keeping a little low, and to make 160 not out to lead your team to victory is fantastic. Even when the mighty Baba Azam had fallen and Mohamed Rizan had went by the way, he stayed to the end and led his team to a victory. Big up to this youngster. We also saw in England, South Africa, claiming victory in the first one day there, and um, Rassi van der Dussen scoring a brilliant century, fastening around a ball to lead Sri Lanka to that victory. Some good news coming out of the girls and the 19 CWI tournament. You know that tournament finished last week, the USA won through that unfortunately we came second. But we had some very tough performances. I know um, Shalini was the top, one of the top players in the tournament, that's our captain. We also had Geneva doing excellent, Chanel Shaw contributing with the bat. And what I've gathered so far is that six of our young Trinidad and Tobago girls are in a squad that has been chosen by CWI again for the first ever Women's Under-19 World Cup. So CWI has started preparation. They have chosen a squad. This squad is going to travel to Florida in the beginning of August for some practice games and so on. And six Trinidadians are in that, including some of the names I just called. They begin training this Saturday, 4 p.m. That's our girls. They are having luck. The, the Women's Association, led by Coach Kelvin Williams, are going to put them through some practice starting this Saturday at the Cricket Center. Um, one item of not so good news for West Indies, because one of our players, our test opening batsman, John Campbell, is facing in this where, what you call doping whereabouts rules violation. And that inquiry was supposed to start. It has been postponed to August 2nd. For those of you wondering, what do you mean by anti-doping whereabouts rules violation? It's not easy being an international sportsman. You must be very careful where you are, what you do. And anti-doping is a serious, serious matter. It's something that is being taught across the board now to all young sportsmen that they need to be aware of it and know what the conditions are that you have to maintain what the criterions are, what is safe, what you can use and not use, and you will need as a young sportsman or as parents looking on, remember that you're a young sportsman, even at cricket, West Indies under 17, football under 15, lawn tennis, we'll talk just now. At all these tournaments, you have to be careful what you give your child because the anti-doping stretches across a wide range of drugs. So what happened is that apparently Mr. John Campbell missed one of his test. Now, what you have to do as an athlete is that you have to give the anti-doping, the, the World Anti-Doping Organization, three months notice of where you are going to be between the hours of 5 a.m. to 11 p.m., one hour every day. So every day you have to be there for that one hour. If you, if they, and they can, that's out of competition, and they can come there at any time and ask for, to do a test. If you are not there, then you have violated the whereabouts rules. And you will be investigated as to what happened, what went wrong, and if you are found guilty, or you cannot justify where you are and why you did not take the test, you can be banned for up to two years. This has happened to a former international cricketer from the West Indies already. Okay, so it's, it's something that's serious, and that's why I brought it up. Not so much to pound Mr. Campbell, because it could have been an honest reason that it was maybe discovered why he was not there, but just so that you, the public, are aware, especially the athletes, the parents, the, the, the coaches, everyone else, and even the youngsters who are looking on, that this is very important. You need to be aware of these things. Sometimes you don't know what it is, so you need to know. Also, uh, moving across to football, and one of the biggest transfers, Robert Lewandowski, a name everyone should be familiar with, has moved from Bayern Munich to Barcelona for 50 million euros. We know that last Barcelona is trying to rebuild. They're 
things were not so well with them last year, and therefore they have gone big. And we all know the capabilities of the striker. So all the best to him. The UEFA Women's Tournament continues. That has reached the quarterfinal stage. Uh, now that quarterfinal game is played so far. England versus Spain. England won that one 2 1. And Germany shut out Austria 2 0. Tomorrow, Sweden will face Belgium. And France will take on the Netherlands in the other quarterfinals. Let's see how that goes. Locally, in the Ascension League, that remember we've given you an update on that every week. So that continues. There are games every day. The current leaders are Rangers with Defence Force in second place. So as I said, God support local sports. We have that league going on. Go to the nearest stadium. Take a look at our local footballers. You know, it's easy at first uh, afterwards when a team is selected and they don't perform so well. Where, he did he, where did he come from? You know, how did he make the team? If you go and look, then you are more aware of what's happening. You can make a, a more honest judgment of our players. You'll be, you will feel more committed, more patriotic when they go out there to play. You feel that closeness to the players because you have been there looking at them. You have seen them show their skills locally. You have seen what they can do, and then you really want to reach out and support them. So go out and support our local football. Another major bit of news from TTFA is that come this year, they are trying to create or to set up what is called a new elite football league to be the top league in Trinidad and Tobago. It's something mentioned by the, by the director of football, Mr. Anton Conil, that they want to move in this direction now. It's fantastic if you can get all your best players in the country playing against each other. It means that the standard for our football will be lifted because that is what you want. I mean, you look at the best leagues in the world, it's the best players play against each other. So if we can have that in Trinidad and Tobago with our best players playing against each other, and if that league, that elite football league, means that we are even going to have some foreign players as we now have, to help to lift the standard of all locals, all the best. One major problem though, they are seeking gov government funding to tune up 3.5 million for three years. Um, we all know the situation we are in Trinidad and Tobago. I don't know if that will come to pass because whether the government can be able to fund something like that, but I wish TTFA all the best. We all love our football. We all want to see you know, the strike squad back on the road to some World Cup again. You know, we have been there before. We have dropped down the ratings. We have been struggling. And we, we, we all love our sports and we love strike force and we like to see them back on the way up. And this is something that we can look forward to. In terms of athletics, big, big night tonight in about just a couple of hours, 10.50 p.m. exactly. Jerem Richards will be in the final of the world's 200 meters. He came in third in the semi-final, in his semi-final, and he's there tonight. If you can hook on to that and take a look. Of course, after our program, we finish at nine, you have enough time to grab something to eat, grab a cup of coffee if you're feeling sleepy, and let's wake up and let's cheer on our Jerome Richards. It's, it's, you know, if we all get up there and get onto some device and, 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 and send a positive vibe to Jerome, you know, I, I honestly believe it works. We might be able to give him some positive vibes, a positive TNT vibes, you know, just as we are successful in getting that, that tropical storm to pass between Trinidad and Tobago, we can send some positive vibes to Jerome and take him to the to medal, if not gold, at least silver or bronze in that 200 meters tonight. So let's be there for our, one of our local heroes. And of course, we must mention this program, Shelly and Praise Price continues to excel. Fifth world championship 100 meter title. That's fantastic. That's something that People dream of winning one, of reaching in a final to start with. We dream of reaching the Olympics or something, a world championship. Then we dream of reaching a final. Then we dream of winning a title. And now Mr. Price has five world championship 100 meters. And it was a Jamaican sweep because Sharika Jackson came second and Elaine Thomas here claimed the bronze. And they are back out again for the 200, so we wish them all the best. In cycling, as I mentioned in the last two programs, you know, I mentioned France and the, the, that, that cycling Tour de France. It's such a fantastic thing to view on TV. The sights are amazing. It makes you, of course, want to go France if you have never been there, you know. And Jonas Vindegaard seems to have sewn it up with just a couple of stages to go. He has a very good lead over Tajaj Pogakar in second place. So it looks like he'll be taking, Jonas will be taking the title this year, but still some time for someone else to come up. They have completed the 18 out of 21 stages. And 
for the older people out there, like myself, this is a piece of horse racing news that should get you interested in still playing sports or being involved in any sports. Because I'm sure some of you have heard the name Ricky Jadu. He's no youngster. He's now age 55. And just on March 26, at that age, he rode his 900th winner in horse racing. And that's not all. On the 26th, he had four winners on the day at the age of 55. He said that, you know, some of the jockeys make jokes and call him granddad and so, but he tell them he's still teaching them a lesson. So it's fantastic for him to still be going at, at the age of 55. And it's, it's not an easy sport being a jockey. You have to maintain your weight and your, your health and so on. So good luck to and best and congratulations to Ricky Jadu. So we take a short break and when we come back, we go in to meet our guest for the day. Hi, join me, Suresh Jet Marbury, on ITV every Thursday night, 8 to 9, on iSports Digest, a comprehensive roundup of all sports, local, regional, and international. We will reach out to our villages and our communities in all areas of Toronto and Tobago to highlight their sporting activities. I will also invite prominent guests to share their views and address current issues facing sports, focusing on realistic solutions. Join me on iTV. IE Sports Digest, Thursdays at 8 p.m. right here on IE TV. Right, welcome back. And again, as we start, you know, let's, of course, give thank you again to our sponsors, Lazarus and Samsung Travel Service Limited. Thank you for your sponsorship of IE Sports Digest. So as I said today on the program, we are going to go into the area of lawn tennis. And we have with us the president of the Tennis Association of Trinidad and Tobago, Mr. Hayden Mitchell. Welcome, Mr. Mitchell. Pleasant good night. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And welcome. Um, good night to all your viewers. Right. So as we go on to Hayden, I, I mean, where can I start with? I have to congratulate you on the excellent work that you have been doing as president. You told me it's six years now because it's the second year consecutive that your association has won the Jeffrey Stolmeyer Award from the First Citizens Bank Sports Foundation. Yes. And yes. So congratulations. Th th thanks a lot. You know, that was, um, that was one of our objectives. Um, in terms of having our association be up there because I remember um, about three years ago, I told my association, listen, we're going to win that, right? Okay. Um, and I remember this is chess beat us that year. And that was a year we actually got an award from the ITF for tennis development in the region. Okay, First great. ever award, yeah. right? And, um, you know, we were disappointed and I told the team, listen, let's go again. You know, so we put our ducks in a row and, and, and we got it two and years in a row. Yes, and for those of you who are wondering, what is the Jeffrey Stolmeyer Award? It's an award given at the First Citizen Sports Foundation for the administration in local sport that has had progress in administrative improvements and development of athletes during that year. Um, and they have been able to capture it for the last two years. So it's a significant achievement. It means you are the top sporting body in Toronto and Tobago as far as they are concerned. And that's not all. On the 16th player, Miss Jordan Dookie mm -hmm. was also named feel female youth player of the year. Yes, yes. Um, Jordan, you know, came out of our youth development program um, and she was with our national program since she was just about 11. Okay. Um, you know, so we have quite a few players that came out and she has been doing very well. Lovely. And, well, we could lead off the discussion with this. And also at present, you have an under-21 development championship taking place at the National Rocket Center. And I understand that we did fantastic in that tournament. Right. So we, we have what we call the summer of tennis. Yeah. All right. So we launched it. Um, and really, that was uh, to bring Trinidad back on the map. You know, Trinidad, um, our aim is to be the regional hub for tennis in, in, the, in the region. Um, and we are working with the ITF to get that done. You know, so we are now looking to become an ITF bronze certified uh, facility, which is big for this region. Um, and so we have launched, relaunched since COVID with eight tournaments in a room, we call it the summer of, tournament, summer of tennis. 
So right now, uh, which concluded today, it was actually the under 12. So it was a regional under 12 uh, tournament. Um, so we had 15 teams, 15 nations competing. Um, Trinidad, by way of hosting, um, you get to field two teams in each division. Okay. So in the boys' division, we had two teams, and in the girls' division, we had two teams. And that's one of the benefits of hosting, right? You get more, more opportunities for your players to participate. Fantastic. Yeah. And you say 15... 15 countries, 50, yeah, so we had from Barbados. And how many from each country came across? Some, some, average? yeah, some teams, some countries had two teams, um, a boy and a girl, uh, boys and girls, and then uh, some just had one, um, okay. you know, so a total of, of 15 took part. Okay, great. And of course, I mean, and the great news is that uh, the Trinidad and Tobago teams, the girls, one and two, came first and second. Wow. And That's our fun. boys team, under 12, uh, they came first in their division. So what that means is the top four teams now go on to the Masters in Dominican Republic. So you're going to be playing against Mexico, um, the winners of the region in, in, in Dominica and um, Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico and Central America. So we are seeing our players, our local young players, getting exposure locally and then being given the additional exposure of traveling to compete at a higher level. And on a pathway then that leads them to where, of course, your dream is that to have our Davis Cup team and then um, <laughs> probably someday someone walks out at Wimbledon. Yes, correct. I mean, our vision is to have a top 150 player. Um, we said by 2025, but that was before COVID, right? Yes. So we're going to add two more years yeah, onto yeah, that, definitely, right? Definitely, because um, that's a major setback. Yeah, so you're correct with the pathway of development. Um, so this, these tournaments are part of the pathway in the development of a tennis player. And what happens is players have to increase their rankings, um, their world rankings, to get into tournaments. And these uh, tournaments help them do that. Okay, so the world ranking is based on the tournaments that you play, how you perform, your placing. Correct. And it's all, I, well, ITF simply means International Tennis Federation, for those of you who are watching, and it depends on ITF. Yes, yeah, so in this region, um, there, there are a few things. So you have ITF and you have COTEC. Yeah. COTEC is the Confederation of Tennis for Central America and Caribbean. I am a director on the board for COTEC. Great. I'm also uh, on one of the committees for ITF for this region as well too. You know, so and it was strategic for us because we realized if we want to develop the sport, we have to be able to be where the decisions are being made. Very much so. You have to be part of the decisions so that you understand be what is being discuss as they say, in the boardroom and out so that you can better get your players and, and coaches and management and association aligned with the objectives of the, the larger group. Correct. You're, you're, you're very correct. And, you know, that actually gave us a pathway to have direct communication with the president of the ITF, um, where in 2019, that's where he sent down for the first time ever in this region, the director of tennis for the ITF came down to Trinidad and Tobago. Right, and I mean, that is big because he, they, they, I mean, they have never come. I mean, Trinidad is nowhere in the map, yeah, right? Yeah, as far as tennis. As, as, as far as tennis is concerned. Um, so we're able to get them down here based on our relationship and to get them to come and see the wonderful facility that we have. And after that visit, I was able to get ITF to commit to helping us to develop this facility into ITF training bronze level facility, which okay. we are almost there. Okay, so you're almost there. What does that mean for Trinidad today with this bronze facility and well, for tennis? Well, the, the, those are certifications. You know, the aim is you want to certify these facilities. So it will speak to a standard. So it speaks to the standard of the facility. So in that, once you have this mark in it, you, the, somebody coming will know that, okay, there's a certain quality of courts. There's a certain level of technology. The coaches are of a certain level, right? Um, everything, everything in place to develop a player, world-class player, is at this facility. So what Trinidad now has to do is now, we now have to market the facility. You know, we have this prize here. Yeah. So we now have to go after who we want, you know. I, I, I'll give you a good example. I remember just before COVID, um, some players from the U.S. contacted us and they wanted to come to Trinidad to train just before the Australian Open. You know, this is the first call we got like this. And they were saying, you know, we see you guys have an indoor court. Um, your, your, your weather is similar to Australia. 
and your court conditions are similar to the court in Australia. So we want to come down and train, you know. And at that point, I mean, we weren't ready as yet, yeah. <laughs> right? Because, you know, you have to have everything in place. In you place. need accommodation. I mean, you need to have a plan. I mean, we didn't have all the um, technology in the facility as yet, you know. So it just showed us where it is we can go. Exactly. And you mentioned accommodation. I know for international athletes to train, a certain level of accommodation within proximity of the site and so on is needed or our means of getting there and therefore th that will mean liaising with government with police right. officials everything to ensure that if we have these kind of athletes come and that those measures are in place for us to, to access yes. easily access the training facility yeah. it's a lot of work it, it, it's a lot of work um you know in the itf <coughs> in their um certification they have gold silver and bronze um we will be the only bronze level in this region. Well, I would have guessed so. In, I mean, even Central America. We'll okay, be, in Central yeah, America. Yes, so that's what I'm telling you. It's very big, right? Okay. Um, but for us to move to silver or gold, um, we have to have, of course, accommodation for players. So exactly what you said. Yeah. You have to have accommodation, athlete accommodation, and you have to have different court surfaces. So for instance, at the National Racket Center, um, we're just going to have hard court surfaces, right? Yeah. We have four indoor. And we have eight outdoor, and we're going to, go, we're going to be putting down two more outdoor. Um, for us to reach the silver, um, we have to have an, a, an alternate surface. So whether it's clay, um, grass, well, we're not going to do grass, but clay, yeah. clay is probably the, 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 the next one. But we, ha we have clay courts right now, just to develop it. Yeah, so we have, you know, we have lovely facilities. We have Tranquil, mm -hmm. um, we have St. Jane's uh, Tennis Club, and we have up in Petrochin right point up here don't point up here um lovely facilities but of course uh the ones that from well, petrogen do those are i'm glad you mentioned a that lot of work that's one of the discussion discussions we can have because with petrogen haven't closed down i guess you have lost access to those courts or the development of those courts which will be a serious hamper especially out of port of spain like in san fernando and environment because you have the clay court uh down by the hospital mm -hmm. that's been there Mm -hmm. as long as i can remember right yes and i know petrogen had a number of courts at different locations yeah yeah correct good I, you know i think they have the most amount of courts <laughs> in, yeah. in the country um but i i must say we're able to reach out to the chairman mr kwamana mm -hmm. of, of uh, heritage yeah. and we're able to get a couple of the courts back to um some of the players so they're now using the courts um and the clay Fantastic. courts there's a club there now um that is also doing some training up there but you know we have we have to rehab the courts. Yeah, you know, it's it's, yeah, it's a it's a lot of work, and uh, you know really that they have the perfect setting to have uh, clay court international tournaments. Okay. They have the amount of courts, they have the clubhouse, they have everything that yeah. is needed for it. So it's it a lovely means facility. That it's a lot of work if the lawn tennis association. Well, I keep saying lawn tennis, but mm -hmm. tennis association <laughs> wants to get that done because it will require a sub substantial outlay of funds funds to yeah. get that going given the fact that it has not been used for all but you say it's back yeah yeah we, we have some uh, they are using it presently but really you know access to um facilities is a major challenge i think throughout Trinidad and tobago yeah. uh, when it comes to tennis okay know. so we'll return after the short break Hi, join me, Surajit Marbury, on ITV every Thursday night, 8 to 9, on iSports Digest, a comprehensive roundup of all sports, local, regional, and international. We will reach out to our villages and our communities in all areas of Toronto and Tobago to highlight their sporting activities. I will also invite prominent guests to share their views and address current issues facing sports, focusing on realistic solutions. Join me on iTV i.e. Sports Digest, Thursdays at 8 p.m. right here on i.e. TV. Welcome back. And again, as we come back to the program, chatting with Mr. Hayden Mitchell, President of the Tennis Association of Toronto and Tobago. Let me begin once more by thanking our sponsors, Lazari and Samson Travel Service Limited. Thank you very much for being with us here on IETV Sports Digest. So we are on a question of courts, and of course, as Hayden mentioned, you know, a lot of work to develop those that, um, you know, lie for two years of COVID, nothing happening, and then we know the situation in Petrochin. 
But what I also want to put forward, I don't know if you are aware, Hayden, but are you aware that the, what were the former senior comprehensive and junior secondary schools all had tennis courts? Yes, you, you know, funny you mentioned that. Um, you know, one of my executive members is in the, in the ministry and we are having that conversation. And that is one of the things that we are pursuing because, um, you know, it's a lot of facilities in the schools. And, you know, as you would know, schools is the key to development. That's right. Yeah. And that's why I brought it up. <laughs> Those courts are basically in, in all these schools almost abandoned. Mm -hmm. They are not being used for tennis. Mm -hmm. They use some to play small ball football. Mm -hmm. They use some to play softball, tennis, um, mm -hmm. cricket, and cricket, so on. Yeah. But in terms of lawn tennis, you know, it has not been there. I grew up loving lawn tennis, have mm. hit a couple of balls myself, mm. you know, watching Jimmy Connors and um, John McCall, mm. Bachelor on TV and mm. Leon Borg, mm -hmm. who mm. there was none. <laughs> yes. And um, and you dream of playing lawn tennis. Yes. And yes. then these schools had these that were never really put to use. And I mean, yeah. to go back now probably might come at a cost, but if you want to develop and I'm sure that's your plan. If you yes. want to widen the pool of tennis players in Trinidad and Tobago, mm -hmm. get more kids involved, you must go to the primary and especially yes, the secondary schools. schools. Correct. Um, you know, when I first came in um, to the association, we had, I, I met an association uh, where we needed to have a lot of work with coaches, coaching and coaching development. Um, we've worked with ITF, um, and so part of our strategy was to develop the base of the coaches first because while we understand all these things need to be done it can be done if you don't have the proper coaches and coaching exactly so so and what we have done um and and let me just tell Trina and Tobago and through our association and through coach Kyle Hannes um we are now the only we are now a bronze level certified country for coaching development what that means right um is that we can now train and certify coaches and give them an ITF certification, right? Okay, fantastic. So, so a major step. It is a major step. So it was part of our strategic plan. What, uh, so we'd have done the strategic plan when I first came in and we identified all the things we have to do to grow the sport. One was coaching. Um, we identified uh, people who could be developed. We sent them to Spain um, through TTOC, um, through the IOC and through ITF and we got them to go to Spain to train, and now they come back, now they are tutors. So we can now go into the Ministry of Education and train teachers in phys ed and in tennis. You know, that was our strategy because we understand we have to reach the schools. Yeah, and, and I like the approach you took because you needed to have the coaches first. You cannot yeah. say, okay, we want to introduce tennis, and let's go <laughs> to the schools and uh, we want to play tennis. <laughs> and then get kids show up and then, so who coaching the kids? Who coaching the kids? So the yeah. approach of uh, the, you know the planning has been excellent. I say congratulations on what you have done so far. Anymore. I talk to you, we hear about the bronze. We know, and for our viewers, for Trinidad and Tobago, a small territory like Trinidad and Tobago, to move from bronze to silver to gold, mm -hmm. uh, we may never see it, but just to reach bronze and yes. what Mr. Hayden is saying here <laughs> is a fantastic achievement, and it means that we are way ahead, as you said, not only the Caribbean but the whole Caribbean region. Yeah, Central in America. Central America in terms mm -hmm. of these things, and that is fantastic. And the fact that we can train our own coaches, that mm -hmm. means we can also train coaches from other territories. Correct. And, Correct. And enhance because we must look at sports in the in the Caribbean not only as a trend. Yes, we're proud to be Trinidad and Tobago, mm -hmm. but like West Indies cricket, you know, we look to develop the Caribbean as a whole. Correct. And and Jamaica is the best place to look at in terms of athletics that they've been able to do. And now now we see a little of it spreading around the Caribbean, you know, mm -hmm. competitiveness and, and lifting our athletics. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the same can happen with lawn tennis starting from Trinidad and Tobago. Correct. Yeah, correct. So in terms of making here the hub, remember, making here the hub means total tennis development. So you have different pillars, you know. So you have the athletes. You have the coaches, you have the facilities, you have the parents, you have, I mean, everything that goes into the development of athletes, and then you have the tournaments, right? So all those things have to be working um, in conjunction with each other for us to really develop, you know? So that, that was our plan. Yeah, you must have that, that progression, that con connection between Correct. one and one and the other. So it means, therefore, that now that we have developed the coaches, you can look to move now towards the school and... Um, through the Ministry of Education, but I can tell you, having been there myself with secondary schools cricket, that um, there is 
something that um, I guess, you know, that need to be known that when you go to the PE teachers in school, they have their specific job outline that they have to perform in terms of what they do in terms of their the curriculum. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if you want to introduce sports or have sports like competitive sports to train in a school, what you will require is to actually send coaches to the school mm -hmm. outside of the PE teachers. teachers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you look at cricket, for example, or football, use it as an example because they, they are there on, in almost every school. Mm -hmm. The coaches are not necessarily the teachers in the school. In some instances, you'll find it, mm -hmm. and you'll find the teachers who come out and assist, especially at the lower level. But as you move up, what you'll f have to find a way of getting coaches assigned to schools, probably starting with clusters of school mm -hmm. or schools that are more interested and are willing to come on board. You have mm -hmm. to be able to, uh, the Ministry of Education is one, you have to be able to convince principals and administration in school that mm -hmm. we want yeah. this, we want you in our school, that we need to get our kids playing and, yeah. and, and the field and lawn tennis is a fantastic game that mm -hmm. they'll enjoy. Um, you know, it may be less expensive than something like cricket, which mm -hmm. will work mm -hmm. in your favor, yeah. you know. And and of course, facilities, as I mentioned, you'll have to find a way of getting into the schools and those courses that have been abandoned. Mm -hmm. You do it, you just want it to a standard where we can introduce the game. Mm -hmm, correct. Once you're introducing the game and the kids start knocking the ball, then you take them to where they can you know, move forward. Yeah. And that's how you look at widening the pool of lawn tennis association. As I say, uh, I mean, you can come in here because I don't think lawn lawn tennis, well, I'm using lawn tennis because I don't want to mix up with table tennis table and tennis, lawn tennis, yeah. is, as has been able to reach out to the communities mm -hmm. as much as, let's say, football and cricket. Mm -hmm. so how do you plan to do that? Well, you know, if, if you add all the sports in Trinidad and Tobago, the participation, all right, it still will not add up to half of football, we know that. <laughs> right? Followed closely by cricket, yeah. right? You understand? So, so, so that is it. You know, I mean, we want to be one of the top five sports in the country. That is our aim, all right? Um, so to do that, of course, you have to make... The, the game itself now has changed, right? So they are actually mobile courts. They are actually smaller courts you can go. So, for instance, in primary schools and secondary mm -hmm. schools, we could actually come and set up courts right in the parking lot right. and get them playing. Again, part of our strategy, too, is... You know, I don't want to give out all my strategies here next mm -hmm. time. Everybody call them all the time, right? All the other. But anyway... Um, but part of our strategy, of course, is to go into clusters where we already have clubs. So we'll have a tennis club in the area, they have access to a court, and they're, they're in line with our developmental program. So if I go to a school, I, I, I come to Diego Martin, I know there's a court right there in Diamond Vale, I know we have a certified coach, so when I, when I spot talent inside the school, yeah. I then say, okay, this, this is somebody who we, we can take, and that is what we're going to do. We're going to build it out slowly. Great. Um, because recently I was in Maru and I attended a wedding at the, the complex there yeah. and they have two lovely courts. They just redid them. <laughs> yes, they just redid them. So f funny you mentioned that. I think you read in my mind and I had to, I had to check my text, right? <laughs> but no, but um, they, we actually, uh, they reached out to us, right? Mm -hmm. And um, we have a meeting with them, I think, if not next week, the week after, mm -hmm. uh, to develop a program for Mayoral. Lovely. And, yeah. and let's shift to the other side of the country. I'm aware that in point 14 as well, some courts have been developed recently. Point 14. David, former footballer. Yes, okay, so I think he, he got one of the facilities up there. Mm -hmm. um, so he's managing one of the facilities up yeah. there, one of the old Petrochen, yep. and where, where they, had Somewhere some, there. Yeah, they had some courts. And point 14 is, 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 is unique. You know, we had a very big program down there uh, with Atlantic LNG, um, you know, and where they went into all the primary schools. So point 14 to us is very, very good. And coming out of that um, program, we actually have two players that are on the national team who actually participated in this under 12. Um, this is the Mohammeds, right? Chanel Mohammed, she's a big player from yes. Point. Yes, oh, that name. Yes, big player from Point. Her dad is Rafik, okay, Rafik, hi, <laughs> right? Um, but yeah, but he's, he, they are big tennis family down there. And, um, and, they, and her kids are now on the national team. Okay. You know, and they came out of that whole Point okay. 14 program. Um, well, 
I could share a bit of information. The reason why I know about these courts as well, even the one at the Rocket Center, I happen to know very closely the, the person, the, the company, and the man in charge of that company who actually was responsible for doing the, the lovely work on those right, courts. I excellent. have a picture on my phone. It happened to be my brother, Ballet. I'm a very good night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice, <is> brother. <laughs> so I'm very much aware of, of the work in the courts and, right, and, yeah. and how it came yeah. about. And, and Mara looks lovely. Yeah, Mara looks lovely. And the work that went into getting Trinidad to be able to reach courts at that level and mm -hmm. the international expertise that are, and you talk about the international expertise that we need that you needed for the game itself. But just to let the viewers know that for those courts to be certified by ITF, international expertise had to be brought in to actually work with the relaying and redoing of the courts to make yeah. sure they re reach the standards, the high standards required to be accepted as, let's say, the bronze level. And yeah, so yeah, yeah. Speaking about. yeah, 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 very so, correct. So, uh, you know, so you, you all have been doing wonderful work, I guess. It shows now why they have won this one, <laughs> I won two years straight. And, and as things continue, you know, we, we look at the spread. Everything. But about uh, in terms of sponsorship, how has that affected your organization? Um, you know, I think, you know, sponsors, it has been my experience that sponsors want to put their name behind a good product. You know, I think very often um, NGBs, national governing bodies, you know, they shoot themselves in the foot, you know, because, you know, things that should not be in the public domain are in the public domain. And I mean, I'm a businessman myself, and if it is, I'm a potential sponsor, and I see a lot of bacchanal going on in, in whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would not want to put my brand behind that, exactly. you know, um, and that's why we've been very, very strategic in making sure that we run our ship very, 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 very clean. Um, you know, and we've we've had some very good sponsors, uh, even for this uh, the Davis Cup that we have coming on. You know, um, we just signed on. Be Mobile is now our official technology partner. Okay. With for the tennis association. Great. Um, and then we have Blue Waters now came on as our official water partner. So I mean, if you if you look at um, at you know tennis, you know, and there are lots of there are lots of areas where you can where you can advertise. Um, we have for citizens as well. I mean, they came on, you know, to sponsorship with, with, with this as well. I mean, we've won the First Citizens Award two years in a row. <laughs> yes, so, so you, are, you know, so, so I, must, represented there. I must thank First Citizens, um, the, the, the manager, the CEO, thank you very much. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's a lot of work that goes into it. Yeah. So at least, so you have been, things have been moving along nice in terms of getting your, 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 your tournaments and so on, sponsorship. You, you been, yeah. Anna, uh, it's a little controversy, I wouldn't say controversy, because it has to do, as you say, with organizations being on top of the game. Yeah. And you mentioned that these players who just won and placed first and second, they, are, they have to go to, is the Dominican Republic? Dominican Republic, right. yeah. In terms of their getting there, it requires sponsorship or? It, it will require funding. Um, you will have, part of it is the ITF will pay for part of their ticket. So, for instance, uh, they will give us a grant. Um, the grant may be maybe 300 US per player. And then you will have to fund everything else. But when you reach across there, you will have everything. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I know that already from the time we won today, I already started to think, okay, we have to start to get <laughs> fundraising happening. We have to, because we, we can't wait for everything. And there's a reason why I asked you that, because as a director with sport company as yeah. well, um, I saw recently our honorable member for our sports, Ms. Shampa Kujo, continues to tell accent sporting bodies, don't come last minute to request right. funding. We have had, in the last couple of weeks alone, we had TTFA, had a girls under 15 and a boys under 15 looking mm -hmm. funding last minute at mm -hmm. mm -hmm. a water polo team. Mm -hmm. And I think I saw another association, again, basketball. Basketball, yeah. The girls complaining team. that they're not getting funding. The the, 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 what was sent to them was, you know these tournaments are going to be held mm -hmm. long before. Mm -hmm. Why wait last minute? And this is to the, you know, to our sporting bodies out there. Yes, we want the government to assist. And sometimes we are unfair to the government because mm -hmm. we go late and we expect them to create miracle. And, and, and I'm sure Hayden mm -hmm. can enlighten us on that being on Sport TT because you, you go to Sport TT and say, you are the government agency supposed to give us money. We want mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. 50, 100,000, 200,000. And then you, you say, well, I can't. And you say, well, why? Because you're supposed to have money for sports. Yeah. So, 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 I mean, 
under this present um, board, right, this is under Douglas Camacho, excellent chairman, right? Um, I mean, he knows sports like that, you know, yeah. he's corporate. A lot he, of experience. Yeah, a lot experience of experience, sports. and, you know, we have an excellent board. Um, you know, there's a process to get the funding, right? And I think a lot of NGBs, even though we've been doing a lot, um, I want to say we are, I'm, I'm putting on my sport, yeah, yeah, my right, sport. Yeah, change a little bit. Yeah, little change a little bit. Tennis, yeah. All right. Um, there is a process, and uh, our departments have been reaching out to the NGBs to explain the process. So, to, for instance, I, I, I'll give you an example. Um, if an NGB wants to go to some, to some travel to some, um, some tournament, right? They have to send their full request and budget into sport. There's a department, they, they, they then go through it with a fine tooth comb, they make sure they double check everything. It then has to go to the finance committee because you know you can't approve funding if you don't have any funding, yes. right? So the finance committee has to go through it, then it has to go to the board to approve. Once, that, once the board approves it, it then goes to the Ministry of Finance. So, sorry, the Ministry of Sport, right? Because they, they are yeah, the line yeah, ministry, that, they have yeah. to see it. From Ministry of Sport, you don't have to go down to the Ministry of Finance. Right, and uh, I mean, just remember that documentary. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Ministry and of time. Finance. Yeah, and time. Ministry of Finance will approve, uh, yes or no. Send it back to Ministry of Sport, back to Sport, and then disperse. So, we tell um, NGBs we need at least three months. Now, running an NGB myself, I understand that sometimes you don't have three months. Like the one we just mentioned. We, like we want, you don't have three months. You may get a late notice, especially with COVID. Things are very, very, very fluid. Yeah. Right. Um. I mean, I sit in the meetings and I see how our department in sport, how they really bend backwards to get the information. But we have specific criteria, which even I am subject to. Eh? So for instance, the, the NGBs themselves, there is a compliance side. So if it is you don't reach the compliance um, percentage, if you don't reach that percentage, remember it's taxpayers' money. Yeah. So if it is I have financials outstanding since Oyoho, right since <laughs> you know uh, or, it's, or, or, difficult. It, it, it's difficult you cannot That's spend taxpayers so money as we go on this break what we call the Lazare and Samson travel service break um, we will come back and chat with Mr. Aidan Mitchell hi join me Suresh Jet Marbury on ITV every Thursday night 8 to 9 on I Sports Digest a comprehensive roundup of all sports local regional and international. We will reach out to our villages and our communities in all areas of Trinidad and Tobago to highlight their sport and activities. I will also invite prominent guests to share their views and address current issues facing sports, focusing on realistic solutions. Join me on ITV. IE Sports Digest, Thursdays at 8 p.m. right here on IETV. Welcome back. So, Hayden, let's look at a different area. Um, I mean, tennis, international tennis is fantastic. We don't know when. Um, we, we're looking at the Novaks and well, mm. the Serena, well, the Williams sisters are out. I don't know yeah. if you know anybody, <laughs> you know, somebody to replace those, those people. <laughs> um, especially as you mentioned, you want to have a top 150. So it's a long way for us to reach Wimbledon and so on. But yes. but. We have to have plans, and I'm yeah. speaking to you this evening. We know we have plans. Yeah. The, the Tennis Association is moving forward. Yeah. You have your strategies in place. Yeah. Um, when can we expect to see some of our players moving forward into those rankings? And, and how does scholarship, or how is scholarship, is there a link with, with, with the Tennis Association and foreign universities for our artists to accept scholarships so that they can go to some of these um, you know, schools mm -hmm. or universities where they can further their careers? Yeah, sure. That, that's a great question. Um, for people to advance in tennis, it's about world rankings, yeah. right? So you have junior world rankings, which is the ITF. The ITF controls the juniors throughout the world, under 18. Um, if it is you want to get a scholarship at a university, most of the, most of the people tend to go to the U.S., right? Um, you have to have either high U.S., sorry, a high ITF ranking, um, so, for instance, in 2019, we would have had at least 20 players with ITF rankings. 20 players, okay. right, in 2019. 
um, I mean, then after COVID, well, it just dropped off, which was terrible. But you have to have a high ITF ranking, right? Once you have ITF, high ITF rankings, the colleges then start to rec recruit you. And how do you get the ITF ranking? Well, you have to be able to play in tournaments. So how do you get into tournaments, <laughs> right? So it's a chicken and egg thing. Yeah. So if you look at all these major um, Grand Slam nations, Australia, uh, Britain, US, whatever, what they do is they have a whole lot of tournaments happening. And for each tournament you have, you have a, something called a wild card. So you have about four wild cards, okay. right? So I can now take my player, let's say um, John X, right? Yeah and put them right into the main draw. So they don't have to play qualifying. I don't have to have a whole ranking. Oh, I don't have to have anything. Card. I got a wild card <clears throat> straight into the main draw. And from that point, once I play a game and I win, I get points. Right. That is how uh, the Williams sisters did it. Huh? Yeah, okay. The USTA, they did not play a lot of junior events. Right, they were, I mean, phenomenal as juniors, 12, 13, and then they stopped. And when they reached 16, um, the USTA, right then started to put them in professional tournaments they had no ranking nothing all right so there's a direct correlation between hosting tournaments yeah. and having players with world ranking so sometimes people will come to me and ask well Hayden why come we never have any any world-class players well the issue is that we, ne we don't have tournaments down here to put our players in Jordan Dukey right I mean we mentioned she's yeah. our top female under 16, yeah. she would have had to she, right now she's outside. Okay. She would have had to um, go through qualifying just to get into the main draw. And the qualifying itself is like a tournament. So by the time you reach the main draw, you're tired. <laughs> yes, because you have played a lot of games You've in played a short a, space of in time. In a short space of time. And you're coming against people who are basically just practicing and waiting to come at you. Yes, it's chalk and cheese. So yeah. that's why in our part of our strategic plan is we want players to be able to be born in Trinidad and Tobago stay right here and become professionals. How are we going to do that? I'll give you Mexico. Mexico, who, the, the Mexican president is on, on the board with me in, in, in Cotec. And he said, Hayden, my plan is to have any Mexican stay right here in Mexico and become a professional. They have 76 tournaments a year. 76. We have 52 weeks in a year. Yeah. So you think about the amount of tourism that is happening. They just, it is like a turnstile, people coming in and out. Our plan is to have a minimum of 24 tournaments. So from junior to professional to senior tournaments a year. And that is why our, the first step was to get here certified. Because once here certified, we are able to attract bigger tournaments. So I can go to ATP, I can go to bigger sponsor and say, listen, this is the level of our facility. This is what we have. This is what we want to do. So that bronze level certification is very, very important. It is very important. It is because a if we marketing get that, it tool. It means that we can have the tournaments as you speak about. Correct. Having have the tournaments, it means our players are playing from the junior level in those tournaments. They are gathering their points Correct. to help them to get into that ranking. And from there, as you say, move up where we can move to have a professional. Because it's a, a long while since you met when the Cali and then the Stone Brothers. I yes, think, Shane, Stone actually, Shane, Shane Stone actually is, is playing with our, um, he's knocking with our Davis Cup team, eh? okay. getting them prepared. Right. So th thanks a lot, Coach Dunstan and, yeah. and Shane. So, so we have, it has been a while since we have been ha had some names that, you know, Correct. that mention abroad and so on. Correct. So Correct. you do have a task in your hand. <laughs> Still, <laughs> as president, you have come a long way. You have yeah. put a lot of things in place in terms yeah. of getting the tennis association, you know, to be recognized and yes. moving forward, providing opportunities for our young players. Yes. And I'm sure you will have probably your dream, as you said, before you depart, you, you know, you leave that chair of president of yes. the Lawn Tennis Association, to get at least one, but probably a couple more of our young players into that top. 150 ranking and probably even higher. Correct, correct. That, 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 that is the dream. You know, there's no reason why look, I can't turn on the TV and watch a player from Trinidad and Tobago play. Look, for US Open a couple of years ago, Darian King from Barbados, right? He was in the US Open from Barbados. Less resources than Trinidad and Tobago, smaller population, right? He was, his ranking, I think, was 103. Okay. Right in the world, he had a hundred. What was our last 
Okay, can, can you say who was our last player to rank in the top 150? I would say Joseph. Not, not in 150. We've, we've, uh, we've, we've not had a 150 had in, in seniors. Oh, not that I seniors. can recall now. Don't, okay. don't, don't be no, no, before wrong. Eh? No, right? you know, uh, Yeah, but, but you know, I think the last ATP player with a ranking, now we've yeah. had before, right? Shane Stone and they yeah. would have had. Um, but the last ATP player that we would have had was Joseph, Joseph Kadugan, okay. who's actually played on the Davis Cup team okay. um, next weekend. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you know, so, so that we have is, that competition coming up soon. So that's something to look forward to. Yeah, no, that that is big. I mean, to host Davis Cup to start off with is yeah. something big. You know, to get in to host it, I we had to pull a rabbit out of a hat oh. to get it um, because it was going to Mexico. Okay, you know? and that's yeah. a big investment for the president of Mexico is involved. So if you can yeah. sway something away from somebody who has that amount of yes. you know, authority yes. in terms yes. of things as a president, yes. Yes. from is yes, yes, yes. yes. It, it was it was. I have to thank my team, um, and I have to thank the minister because we did not have a lot of time to put it together. Mm -hmm. um, we went to her and uh, through a discussion, and she expressed her interest. Um, you know, and then my board from, from sport, you know, they completely support because it's part of the vision of Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah, to be to an international hub for sports. An international hub for sports. And, and we sports have, tourism. And sports tourism. So you're talking about... How many people are looking at coming in? For this summer of tennis, we have been at least 500 to 600 athletes over the next month. Fantastic. At least over the next so month. So hotelers will be in smiling. In Trinidad. Listen, I get... I can show you some WhatsApp. My phone, son has the phone here. But we're getting requests from all over the world in terms of this, we need housing, we need this, we need that, you know? Okay. Um, so this is part of the growing pains, but this is sports tourism, yeah. you know? And, you know, the one thing that I have to say is we really need to get all the ministries on board, yep. you know, because it cannot be that, you know, sports, uh, Ministry of Sports is doing this. You know, tourism has to be on board. Culture has to be on board. Everybody has to be put. It's a product you're yeah, developing. It's a product. Is a product. That's right, and to sell the product to the international market, you need cooperation. You need, you need everybody on board, all hands on And deck. we need it. We need to build our sports tourism. Something that has been discussed, I mean, we can't go into it now, we have time, yeah. but has been discussed over the years. We have had um, bodies being formed for sports tourism and yeah. nothing achieved, nothing moved forward. And, and we have, we have facilities. We have some of the best facilities. Listen, I think you could do a whole show on that, yeah. and I'll come on as, a, as another guest. I'll be a guest. <laughs> <laughs> that don't get me started on that. <laughs> so as we move on, I mean, let me thank Mr. Hayden Mitchell for being here with us tonight. I'm sure you have learned a lot. I want to encourage you out there, you know, the, the parents and the youngsters. Tennis is lovely. Mm -hmm. Sports and athletics and getting involved and leading a healthy lifestyle is very important. Tennis is tough. <laughs> it's not easy running around a court. It takes a lot of training, a lot of effort, a lot of fitness. You see, you see sometimes you look at tennis and you see these guys running around the event to fetch a ball. It's not easy. It's, it, it's hard work. I encourage you, try tennis. Give it a shot. As Mr. Mitchell said, they will be coming around the different communities, Hope my arrow soon, mm -hmm. point mm -hmm. 14, mm -hmm. and coming into the schools. Encourage your kids to give it a try. You know, you never know where you can turn. And hopefully one of you out there will be, be next. making Hayden proud <laughs> by getting into that top 150 in a couple of years we may stand in trend and they go and salute our first Wimbledon player I'm not saying champion saying <laughs> just to get somebody into that level of tournament will be fantastic so thank you for viewing iSports Digest thank you Mr. Mitchell for being here with us thank yes. you to the viewers at home for being with us here tonight we look forward as I said to seeing you every Tuesday 8 to 9 p.m. We cannot forget our sponsors, Lazari and Samson Travel Service Limited. Thank you very much for being on board with us. We truly appreciate it as we attempt to spread the importance of sports. And as I said, you know, it's not just about discussing sports and going in the role of criticizing. This program is more development. What can we do? Stop talking and act. And if we can do that, surely we can rebound in sports in Trinidad and Tobago and get people to the top in all levels and in all sports. Thank you very much and do have a pleasant good evening.